baseball games. He goes back for years back and takes a game. And then does it like he used to do it in telegraphic reports. But then he'll put someone's name in there. Currently, he features a player. And uh, Governor Thornburg was telling me the other day, he was fascinating, he was listening, does the whole nine innings. And he was playing second base. Pittsburgh <laughs> 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 Pirates. How'd he do? And well, he brings it down to the last inning and the ninth inning there. And uh, tied up ball game and all of this, and Thornburg gets a homer. <laughs> <laughs> Wins the ball game. <laughs> Broadcast a part of the game. This is a full producer for Fresno Radio's Saturday radio address. This week from the Oval Office, Fresno begins two minutes from Mark. It's the ninth inning of Cubs and the Cars. Tied up. <laughs> and the note that came through to me suddenly said the wire is going dead. And I thought, ninth uh, inning, seven other guys broadcasting the same game. I wasn't about to okay. say we'll play some music. So I had Billy Jerry's to play, and I had him start fouling them off. <laughs> I set a world record for a man standing at the plate hitting successive fouls. <laughs> Although they didn't keep the records like that in those days, so nobody could catch me on it. Finally, all of a sudden, my guy out on the other side of the window started typing, and I waited, and here it came. <laughs> so Jerry just popped out of my first ball pitch. <laughs> Uh, oh, yes, this is cool. Cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that like that. This week from the office. No, I don't know. The uh, from you have to uh, you do that. You have to say the game is coming by telegraphic report, and that's why I never used any of those things like hitting a stick for, for a ball or something. I figured they know I'm not there. So, but you uh, you really do quite a ball game. If it's kind of dull, you know, okay. and you get a thing that says that it's a ground this ball is to show it. And uh, the president will begin 30 seconds from Mark. And you can, uh, you know, that's all it says. No description. You put in the description. So if it's a kind of a dull ball game, you can have it a hard hit ground ball down between second and third shortstop going over after it makes a one hand stab. <laughs> <laughs> Ten seconds, Mike's on. Stand by. My fellow Americans, next week, Nancy and I will be traveling to New York City. We'll be joining some 80 world leaders and other distinguished guests from around the globe to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the United Nations General Assembly. I'll be meeting with many of these leaders, and I want to share with you my thoughts and hopes on this special occasion. I can remember vividly the high hopes and expectations we all shared when the United Nations was created in 1945. The nations of the world, exhausted and devastated after the most destructive war in history, came together to lay the foundation for a better world, one free of war. President Harry Truman declared on behalf of all Americans our solemn dedication to fight for the principles of the UN Charter. Peace, freedom, and an end to tyranny, hunger, and human suffering. Americans have never stopped striving to uphold and defend those principles. The American people have held high the torch of freedom for all those fighting for liberty around the world. Our farmers have provided food for millions of needy people across the globe. We helped rebuild the nations ravaged by the Second World War. We and our allies have worked to prevent a third. We've come to the aid of our friends threatened by aggression in Korea, Vietnam, Pakistan, El Salvador, and Grenada. And we've worked to bring about peace in the Middle East and offered far-reaching proposals to reduce nuclear arsenals. For 40 years, we have honorably carried out our responsibilities to the UN Charter and we have not hesitated to stand firm against those who have sought to undermine peace and freedom for their own sinister ends. In the coming weeks, we will have a new opportunity to pursue the Charter's lofty goals. On Monday, Nancy will be meeting with 31 other First Ladies at the UN to continue the cooperative efforts she began last spring 
to focus world attention on the devastating problem of drug abuse. This is a problem which affects the well-being of virtually every country and can only be solved through the kind of cooperative efforts the United Nations was intended to foster. In one month, I will be meeting with Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. I intend to discuss with him openly and frankly the obstacles to peace and to suggest how together we can remove some of them. If he's receptive, our discussions can go a long way toward building a safer world and realizing the ideals of the UN Charter. The United Nations founders understood that true peace must be based on more than just reducing the means of waging war. It must address the sources of tension that provoke men to take up arms. True peace is based on self-determination, respect for individual rights, open and honest communications, and that is the kind of peace we want. We want countries to stop trying to expand their power and control through armed intervention and subversion. We have the opportunity, in fact, we have the mandate to reduce the danger of nuclear war by drastic reduction of nuclear arsenals. And that's why we've proposed radical, verifiable, and balanced reductions of offensive nuclear weapons and why we're pursuing research and testing to identify defensive technologies which threaten no one. We must defend human rights everywhere since countries which respect human rights are unlikely to unleash war or to impose their will on others. And that's why we insist that the Helsinki Accords and other international commitments be observed. We must establish better communication between our societies, since misunderstandings make the world more dangerous. These will be the subjects of my discussion with General Secretary Gorbachev. I hope that our discussions will contribute to building true peace, to guaranteeing a safe path into the 21st century. But whether this comes to pass will depend on the Soviet willingness to address the real sources of tension in the world, and in particular, their conduct in the world, their treatment of their own citizens, and their continuing and long-standing arms buildup. In preparing for my meeting with General Secretary Gorbachev, I'll be seeking the advice and counsel of our allies and friends, some of whom will be in New York with me. With their support and yours, we can set a course now for a safer future. Until next week, thanks for listening, and God bless you. About seven seconds short. Good day, have a good dinner. <laughs>